Hi, and welcome back to Allen High School's discussion of structure and function for pure substances and mixtures. We just finished up talking about London dispersion forces, and remember they are a temporary uh, change or shift in electron density that if the molecule is very large with a high contact area can become quite strong. Now, if we have polar molecules, polar molecules have always, always an underlying London dispersion. Everything has a London dispersion, but they also have a possibility of a permanent attraction between dipole moments. So do you, if you remember from our last unit, our polar molecules have a permanent dipole moment. And we did that little activity with the polar bears and the penguins and all of that to kind of give you an introduction into polar molecules. And what happens is the partial positive on one and the chlorine, since the chlorine is more electronegative, it would draw electron density towards it permanently. It would make a permanent dipole moment in the direction of the chlorine, okay? So do you remember we use those arrows is one of the ways we can talk about a permanent dipole moment. And what a dipole is, is it's an attraction between two molecules. Now, this here is a covalent bond. That covalent bond is we're going to see numbers and all of that much, much stronger than this dipole-dipole attraction. But this dipole-dipole attraction is what keeps covalent molecules in the solid and liquid state when they are polar, that and the accompanying dipole-dipole. So uh, what I like to do sometimes is say that it has dipole-dipole with the underlying London dispersion. Right? And we can have kind of a balance of these. We have kind of a teeter-totter effect that, um, let me see if I can kind of give you a, an image of this. So that covalent, we already got that point. So if, if we have a really, really big molecule, if it's a small molecule, the dipole-dipole is much stronger than your London dispersion. So you remember a teeter-totter, the big person is gonna cause the teeter-totter to go down. But as we increase the size, so remember this dipole-dipole has a little bit of London dispersion under it, right? If we increase the size of a molecule, that dipole-dipole, or excuse me, that temporary dipole of the London dispersion can swing in the favor of that uh, causing the bigger strength in the molecule. So then we could do something like this. Yes, it's polar and it has dipole-dipole, but it's London dispersion force becomes bigger. So both are present, okay? And um, if we assume same size of molecules, if we're comparing two different molecules of the same size, then dipole-dipole is stronger than London dispersion. All right, but if we get a big, huge honking molecule, it is actually possible for that London dispersion to tip the scales in its favor. Now, there's some changes going on in the scientific community with respect to hydrogen bonding. You saw this holding DNA molecules together. If you have a hydrogen to a fluorine and it's only that molecule, it's not a class of molecules, it's only HF, or a class of molecules uh, in which you have an H bonded to an O, and that O can be bonded to some big cluster of molecules. It, all of the alcohols that we looked at in organic chemistry fall under this. Um, all of those fall into play. Or you can have an H to an N, and an N, if it's neutral, can have two clusters hanging off of it. Remember the nitrogen has those two non-bonded pairs there. So again, that's a whole class. But if you see a hydrogen bonded directly to a nitrogen or a hydrogen direct, directly bonded to an oxygen, there's a special dipole. It's a strong dipole, but scientists are beginning to think there are some um, covalent characteristics thrown in because it's much stronger than you would anticipate for 
a typical dipole-dipole force, and that's hydrogen bonding. So we used to talk about hydrogen bonding as being a super dipole, but again, scientists are thinking there's more to it than that, and we're just going to leave it at that in our discussion. Okay, so this would be a hydrogen bond. Um, so assuming the same size, a hydrogen bond is greater than a dipole-dipole. But all of these are much less than the covalent bond, the network covalent, and the metallic that we talked about earlier. Okay, so let's take a look at this, how we might be able to depict these. Um, remember, we're talking about potential energy, Q plus, Q minus over R. Um, is, is the rough estimate there. When we have an ionic, we have a full positive and a full negative attracting, very strong. With um, hydrogen bonding, you can kind of think of it as a bigger partial positive and a bigger partial negative. Um, with dipole-dipole, again, we're comparing same size. If we're talking about things of similar size, I'm going to make it a little smaller. And then, do you notice I tried to get that London dispersion shaded? I've been trying to use kind of this dotted partial um, positive and partial negative to give you an indication of that um, London dispersion force to indicate that it's a temporary and a weaker force than what we would see with the others, okay? But the point is this, for every single one of them, it's all about that attractive force that we can estimate. Do you remember I said here, if you increase your contact, the closer they are together, and you get a lot of um, uh, even nonpolar components uh, very close together, um, you can actually um, decrease the radius, which would increase the the potential energy, right? Or make it the absolute value of that potential energy. Make the attractive force be higher, okay? So you would increase your strength of your London dispersion. So you've got to know that potential energy formula. We're not going to do any calculations with it, but its explanatory power in terms of the qualitative is critical, all right? Now, um, the next video is going to get into how we look at different properties of substances based on their bonding and intermolecular forces. So until that point, this is signing off.